Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be taking a look at another client's review, meaning that he contacted me for a consultation uh, prior to purchasing this system you see before you. It is located on eBay. I did hide all of the seller's information. Wanted to keep this as ambiguous as possible. However, there is certain things we need to cover in this video because uh, I feel it's definitely a learning curve for anyone out there. But first and foremost, what I want to cover and show you guys is the price of this system. Okay, he's asking $6,200 for this system. Okay, and he has 34 watchers. So apparently, there's a multitude of people out there looking at this and going, "Yeah, this this looks doable." And I think a lot of times what it is is they see the Masso integrated controller with the touch screen, and it looks real cool. It looks similar to a full scale uh, actual mill. But where we start identifying problems, and it doesn't take very long, if we look right here, we see the spindle, which he actually uh, retrofitted, uh, an air-cooled spindle, because they usually have the black top, and it looks a little narrow, and I'm going to guesstimate that this is a 65 millimeter diameter spindle, air-cooled. Where it does become a big deal, if we look at this cable, this cable we see before us, this is a single shielded cable. I'm assuming it's one that came bundled with the spindle. Why? There is no reason to use a single shielded cable because we know in best practice it should be using a double shielded cable to mitigate both frequencies of EMI. And of course, the spindle outputs the largest amount of EMI on any system. This defines that the end user obviously does not know what he's actually selling. I'm sorry, there's no other way to put it. Um, as we look at this and we go deeper into this, here's another picture. You can see that same cable. And this is just single shielded cable, very similar to now what China is including with many of their spindles. I'm sure many of you have seen it. You can see his wire management here, no problem there, but this cable is inadequate for this application. Now, that being said, many guys feel that with an integrated system like the Masso, it's not a big deal to use standard shielded cables. Well, let me explain something, guys. Regardless of the controller you use, in best practice, you want to mitigate both forms of EMI. Not just because of what frequencies are produced by the chassis or whatever robot you're using and retrofitting, but also what's in your shop. If you have drills, if you have other operating electronical equipment, you definitely want to go through and make sure that you're mitigating as much EMI as possible around this robot to keep everything stable. This is a fact, this is best practice, and this is what should be done. We come over here, we analyze this picture. We can see here this, not too much to see here, uh, definitely been used, got some work. You can see the spindle here, and once again we get a different angle of the cable. We can see that single shielded. Um, so I already let the end user know who actually contacted me. Um, that he would be retrofitting that cable immediately in best practice. Once again with the Masso, this is really interesting. The unit actually uses a single cable, and you can see how he ran this. Here's the cable coming in, and it's going to go around to the rear of the unit where he has all the rest of the electronics. So let's see what we got. We'll just keep going. Here's the cabinet. Okay, And now we can see within this cabinet what we have. I'm going to come over here, and here's where I think most guys... You know, they see this and their eyes light up because they see a touch screen and they think, oh man, it's integrated, this is simple, it's got software. Whatever you feel about them, this is the probably the most attractive portion of this system. Let's look at the electronics. This is what your $6,200 buys, this. We see a lot of issues here. First of all, we see ports that are open in the electronical enclosure, which means that once you actually have those ports open, if you don't seal them, you're going to get dirt and debris in here. He's reusing this enclosure. I feel for this price, he could have at least cleaned it, emptied everything out, painted it, or at least sealed it in some aspect and form, used some proper glands to have pass-throughs from the enclosure. Uh, Things down here that are uh, slightly comical is the fact that I believe this is an EMI filter over here. I can't tell for sure. But he has electrical tape around these connections, guys. And you can see it right there. VFD being mounted in this enclosure. We look here again at your cables being used. Nothing here is double shielded. I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure none of these cables stand out as being double shielded. If we come over here to the Masso cable, and you can see it's the large one coming in here, this large artery, you can see here that the Masso uses intertwined 
um, leads. And a lot of manufacturers do that because it does help uh, actually mitigate some forms of EMI. It does it to a slight degree. When I say a slight degree, it's never as effective as actual fil filtering when we're using uh, an actual tin braided copper braid or mylar foil, or for that matter, even uh, more active passive filtering like a ferrite. Okay? Um, this is not the way you want to wire this. You can see these leads are really long, and the longer these leads are that are not going to be shielded, you do have potential for issues with EMI. And again, with the VFD being placed here, even though the controller's electronics are outside, these signals that are coming in from these leads, which I'm sure are controlling various components, you may have corruption. So you want to be careful with that. We definitely want to be careful with that. The VFD being in the enclosure is not such a major concern as if the drivers were here, but I know that the integrated MASO does send and receive a lot of signals. So therefore, any signal that could be corrupted, especially anything in low voltage format, and again, um, Masso uses a differential in voltages. They go all over the place, so you'd want to check that. It's something at a $6,200 price range. He should have looked at um, and definitely did something with this. This is just unacceptable wiring. There's no labeling on this system, and I never really discussed that in previous videos, but I feel this way. If you're going to get into flipping systems and you're doing whole systems with controllers that you're actually building, you better take into account that your clients are going to have questions on what is wired where. And if they can't figure it out, guess who they're contacting? You. And I hate to say it, but considering the fact that this seller only has this system as a complete unit for sale in his store, it tells me that either he's never sold a system before to be aware of the fact that 99.9% .9 of the systems sold are going to have a question regarding it at one time or another, or the fact that he's just looking at a quick move. Because, again, I cannot figure out why you would leave something like this up to the end user to decipher what each lead is going to you know and again that's what we see here they use commercial type um, cable splits and it'll go through here and just plug everything in and there's no labeling at all so the end user if he had to service the system has no idea of what he's doing other than backtracking all of these cables so the question I'm asking you guys to tell me in the comments what do you think of this is this system worth 6200 and wait we've got one more picture here is the actual motors, and of course these have the integrated drivers on the motors. Uh, again, if we come over here, I'm not seeing any ground drains, nothing. All these are all uh, heat trunk. You can see the ends, so we can't really tell here. But judging from the rest of the controller, you can see here that what we've got here is pretty basic, pretty, pretty much blown out in terms of missing areas of detail that are really, really critical. And when I say really critical, I would be I would be absolutely amazed how stable this system would be with leads this long and nothing being actually uh, shielded or filtered. This is a pretty scary endeavor. On top of the fact, I find it almost impossible to believe. How many of you guys think would you buy this system and not have a question about how it's wired? I mean, how many do you really think are out there that are going to buy a system like this, plug it in and be set to go right from the gate and never have a question, hey, you know, I want to put an extra relay in the system. How do I hook this up? Where does this go? Where does that? Think about who you're asking, guys. This is exactly the question I rhetorically asked the client who had me do the consultation on this because it's a great question. And it was one that when I asked him it, he said, no, you're right. I probably have a question pretty quick because there's some things here that don't make sense. And I said, that's exactly the way I feel. First of all, I'd ask him right away, why do you have electrical tape down here? The only thing that could tell me is one of two things. He'd probably tell you, well, someone else did it. And then, then if you get told that, I'd say, okay, well, someone else did it, but it doesn't mean it's right, so why didn't you correct it if you knew what you were doing? That's the thing you got to pay attention to, Okay. Just because, you know, a mechanic leaves bolts out of whatever part he's putting back in your car and then you go to sell the car and the guy that lifts the hood sees that part and sees there's bolts missing and you say that to him, he would say probably the same thing. You just don't care. So, again, you don't care or you don't understand it. So when we see something like this, that's terrifying. Okay, so we still have a three-phase output BFD here. Uh, looks like we got a meanwhile well power supply here. I'm, I'm assuming this is supplying actual power to the uh, Masso. But 
overall, and this is what I told this client, I tell all my clients, and I want you guys all watching my channel to understand that most of the time, guys, unfortunately, find my channel after they have a problem. I don't know why that is. I just think it's the way that they do their Google searches. I hope many of you start finding the channel before you have a problem so that these videos will save you or at least make you ask the questions account. It does not matter what the machine looks like here as much as it matters what the machine looks like here because it can look like this externally, but if it looks like this internally, and this is everything controlling the system and produces stability for consistent, uh, consistent reliable parts, then essentially you could be looking at purchasing either an, in, an unstable robot, which is essentially a paperweight, because I can't tell you how many clients contact me um, from the past and they'll say, hey, I bought this system and sometimes it runs, sometimes it doesn't. That's why I do these videos. And in this instance, this one cable alone, because the, um, the uh, client that I did the uh, consultation for, I explained that if you wanted this cable built, you're still looking at well over $100 to have this cable built. So that right there just saved him the amount easily on the consultation. It was over the amount of the consultation. So him seeing that, he already knew, now I'm paying $6,200. I already got to start changing components. And that's what a lot of guys don't think about unless they're willing to accept work like this. In which case, if the robot isn't stable, what do you do? You know, Do you go back to this guy who's selling one of these and you're hoping you're going to get the direct end result from him as, as far as a solution? If you really think about it, would that make any sense that he provide you a solution any different than what he provided himself? Because why would he give you a better idea of how to fix problems if he didn't implement them himself as a solution? doesn't make sense guys logically it's it just doesn't make sense so again looking at this understanding this and then seeing these price tags and I just did a video on how to make money flipping robots and I want to clarify some things because maybe uh, maybe I'm not being specifically clear on what I mean by that you can easily find a portion of robotics that you're comfortable doing that takes you out of the equation in terms of liability and in terms of what you feel comfortable doing. I think what happens is people have delusions of grandeur where they feel they can make the largest sum of money and just kind of, you know, just sell something and they're selling a car and they're done. Well, that may be on Craigslist where you never see the people again, but on eBay or another site online, you have traceability, meaning this buyer will most likely come back to you, not only in feedback, but also to find out, again, hey, how do I wire this? Hey, how do I do this? Because he's expecting this individual to be some form of authority because he owned the system. So what I really want you guys to think about is, is the easiest components to sell that you're comfortable with. Most clients are comfortable dealing with the mechanics of the chassis because it's externally mounted. Everything is there. It's a mechanical being. So it's not something that takes a lot of detail other than linearity and smooth operation and quality components in terms of the automation hardware side of it. Where things get tricky is you better know your electronics regardless of what unit you're using like the Masso or whatever integrated controller you're using because the bottom line is they still demand a certain level of respect. And don't believe for a minute that Masso or any other company is going to take responsibility for someone wiring the unit improperly and not following proper best practice. Because if there's a problem with this unit meaning the Masso, you can rest assured that Masso most likely would say, well, how did you wire it? Show it to me. And if you send them a picture of this and they see this, they could definitely ask you, hey, well, how come we're not using, you know, any ferrites or any shielding or any, I mean, there's nothing going on here. He just simply broke this cable out, which is basically a breakout cable, and just split everything up. And they get connection. They then see that the robot works in terms of motion, and God knows how long he ran it. So, again, this is why I cover these videos in detail to make you think. Ask the right questions. Ask the right questions. This is the picture. I'm, I'm really grateful he uploaded this because he obviously is not trying to burn anybody in terms of hiding it. But... In terms of showing it, I don't know if you're doing any more justice because seeing this and seeing what we see here, like I said, right down to wire pass-throughs not using the proper glands. I mean, this 
this is ridiculous what we see here. Holes in the, in the actual enclosure. I mean, I don't know what else to say. And we're not talking expensive parts here, guys. These are a couple bucks. You see a gland used right here, but nothing being used right here. I mean, like I said, I hope to hear from you in the comments. Tell me what you think. Um, I would tell anybody, this: if you see something like this, ask the seller what their intention is in terms of support, being that there is no labeling on any of the wiring. Um, touch base with them. You know, is there double shielded cable used? You can message them that. There's nothing wrong with asking those questions. See what they say. Um, it, either way you look at it, it's going to at least make you think a little harder before you drop your hard-earned money because 6200 is a heavy, heavy order. So again, guys, I thank you for your support. I hope that this helped at least one of you. Take care.